I thought I would come on here and share my process for how I design the washi tape stickers that I create for my bullet journal setups. Um, so I use Photoshop to create this repeating pattern and it's super simple and I'm going to show you right now. So I just have here on my computer, I have Photoshop open and I'm going to create a new document and I'm going to create a custom square canvas because that's the easiest shape to make a repeating pattern with. So I'm just going to do 5,000 by 5,000 pixels, 300 dpi, which is the resolution that you typically want to use for printing things out. I'm just going to create the document. And for this, I'm going to take the graphics that I created for my strawberry May bullet journal setup. Um, I will have that linked. I really enjoyed how that came out. So I'm going to take all of these different shapes and just drop them into my canvas. So since these are external files, they are coming into my canvas as smart objects. So in Photoshop, a smart object is basically like a separate file from, it's like a file within a file. So the original attributes of this file are preserved. So if you make like transformations and like scale it down and then decide to later scale it back up, that resolution that we had initially is preserved, um, which is great for making changes for these patterns. So I have all of my graphics in here. I'm going to just hide some of these and create ourselves a background. I usually like to like start by color picking from one of the assets and see how I feel about that color. So I kind of like, yeah, this is a good one since it has all of my images combined into one here, it has all the colors of the color palette. It's good for checking the background color and I, I like how that's looking. So I think that's a good background. And so now here's my secret. So in Photoshop as of version 22, um, there is a new pattern preview mode. So if you go up to view in Photoshop and you click pattern preview, now your canvas repeats infinitely. So it's really cool because you can take a layer and drag it off the edge here and it just automatically creates a repeating pattern. It repeats over on the other side of your canvas. So I like to work kind of zoomed out, um, but not too zoomed out, just enough to kind of see how it's repeating, but still see the canvas a decent size. Um, I'm just taking my shapes and I'm just going to arrange them in a way that I want my initial layout to look. And I just kind of make sure I have all my basic elements of the pattern on the canvas, just initially starting with something. And for duplicating these objects, I have auto select on for moving, which means that I just click on an image and whatever layer is on top it selects that layer. And then I like to use Alt or Option on Mac um, and just click and drag. So that creates a duplicate of your layer automatically as you move it. So it keeps the original where it is placed and then it's dragging out a copy of that layer. You sort of get a feel for what you want there's no right or wrong answer. It's just really what you think looks best. Okay, so I like 
how this is looking. I'm going to zoom out to kind of see the greater pattern and then zoom in again to see how it's looking. I, I like where this is at. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my pattern out as its own PSD. Even if I don't need to go back into this pattern, I like saving the Photoshop document just in case I want to go back in or switch any colors up. What's nice about since I used a solid color fill layer for the background, I can just go and play around and see if there's like a different color I would like to try for the background. Which is really nice and a great way to create different patterns out of just one set of images. So once I have the pattern the way I like it, I have my document ready. I'm going to edit, define pattern. And I'm just naming my pattern how I want it named. So now if I, let me take all these layers and just group them and hide them for a moment. I can go down here and create a new pattern layer. So now this creates a pattern fill with all of your pattern options. And since we just defined that as a pattern, you can go and pick it out. You can change the scale that you want. Uh, let me turn off pattern preview actually. It's a little distracting. So here's my document pattern. Gonna take you can see I have my little pattern. I can make it like 10%, make it 50%. You can change the scale, you can change the rotation, um, which is really great. So, and it's an, it's an infinite pattern. <laughs> so once you have your pattern, um, we're ready to create the washi tape stickers. I created a document that is the dimensions for my Cricut's print and cut settings. So that way I can print these out and then have my Cricut machine cut everything for me. And those si that size is 6.75 by 9.25. So I just created that 300 DPI RGB again. I have this blank document. And now I'm going to go and take the rectangle tool and just create a rectangular strip. The Archer and Olive notebooks use dots that are a half centimeter apart from each other. Um, and a lot of like washi tapes are somewhere in like the like 1.5 to 3 centimeter range in terms of the width. So you can actually control the width. So if I right click here, in the box, you can change it to centimeters. Well, I want it to be 1.5 centimeters. And this one, I'll make the height uh, 20 centimeters. Yeah, something like that. So now I have this rectangle. I'm going to turn off the stroke because I don't want an outline. And now you can go to fill and do a pattern fill. You can go and take that pattern that you just made. And I usually start at 10. See if I want to maybe go smaller. Mm, that's maybe too small. Maybe something like that. And if I don't like how things are lined up, I might try an, a different angle. Maybe I like that, maybe I don't. Uh, but sometimes I would just want to like offset it. I don't really want to rotate my pattern. Um, and you can't really do that with a rectangle fill. So the way I go around it is that I go down here and I get myself a pattern fill layer, separate layer. And size do I want? I want to like 10% we said. Something like that. 
I'll go 10. And then you can now click and drag and offset the pattern. And now I can create a clipping mask, which locks it to the bounding box of our rectangle. And now I have, I'll turn off the background because when I save this out for Cricut, you don't want the background because then it's going to read it as one solid rectangle to cut out and you want the individual washi tape stickers to be cut. So I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to take these two layers and group them together. Um, and now I'll just Alt and Shift um, or Option and Shift on Mac. That will allow me to duplicate and drag and also keep things in a straight line. Um, you don't need to do that. I just like to print mine out in a grid. So it's an easy way, especially if you want to divide it up. So the way I print my documents out, I have two rows of rectangles. So I would actually have these about like half the size and they're like aligned. Uh, and now I can just go and take this and export, quick export as a PNG. Washi tape stickers. And it's all ready to go. And then from there, just boot up my Cricut and print and cut it out. Um, I have a whole method now with my Cricut for creating an outer bleed on the edge. So that way, if the Cricut isn't precise and it's like slightly off with the cut, it's still a full print on the sticker and there's not like a white border or something. Um, and I have a whole like method for that. So if you want a video on that, definitely let me know and I'd be really happy to create a tutorial on that. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, um, you might want to check out these videos that I'm going to put up. Uh, thank you and I'll see you in the next one.